Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 66. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building for episode 66. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's up, y'all? Y'all know that if it's Tuesday, you know what it means, but it's Sunday. So we're here with the man Hype, the Sports Review podcast. I'm John. I'm Mark. I'm Nick Freeze, aka 99 Gorilla, what y'all see right there. And we the Sports For You podcast out in L.A., Townhouse Media representatives here with our man Hype, Rapid Philly. So glad to be here. Copy that. Let's hit the rundown now, y'all. Custom Hustle. You already know what it is. Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter. That's my clothing line. You follow that. Uh, custom jerseys, jackets, sweatsuits. Uh, we just got the basketball jerseys in. We got the baby jackets in. We got the baby jerseys in now. So, you know, hit me for all your custom needs. T-shirts is available also. Uh, H2H Cleaning, that's at H2H Cleaning, that's my cleaning company. It's a tri-state area situation only, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide out to LA and saying, get your shit all the way together. <laughs> um, let's hit the rundown now. E-Block Radio Network every Monday at 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. Every Tuesday at 2 p.m. on the GFT Radio Network. 8 a.m., 8 p.m. on 216 The Blend every Wednesday. Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com every, tw- every Thursday at 12.30. Friday, the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. All right, y'all, episode 66. You're all the way to the West Coast with this situation. These fellas talk sports every week, which is why we got them talking relationships and shit now. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you need a woman? And we're going to start with we're gonna start with Nick since he showed up late. <laughs> Let's get it. Why do you need a woman, Nick? You, you said, why do I need a woman? Yes, why did we not go into anything negative about this is why I don't I'm need not. this bitch. We talking all about why you need her. I need a woman to compliment everything that I do. Make my life, you know, a lot easier and the same thing in perspective. You know, the unconditional love a woman gives you is nothing is nothing to compare to. You know, uh, especially with mine. You know, I appreciate everything she does for me. She picks up the slack where um, where, where I leave. Everything like that. So you know, you got you got your woman like they got a keeper, no matter how 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 crazy she drives you. <laughs> That's a fact. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, uh, for me, I feel like man, just just having a good woman in your life make in any capacity make your life better, man. Whether it's a friend, uh, you know, mom, sisters, cousins. But if you do have a girl and that's a good woman, man, your life will be a hundred times better than what it would be if it's not. Like Nick said, man, salute to mine. Uh, as much as she get on my nerves, it's, 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 the, it's the, the, the opposite that she brings to it, too. She makes me, like, a whole lot happy. So uh, everything she do, the, 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 where I'm weak at, she picks me up. Um, you know what I'm saying? Give me, and I give me, one, give me at least give me at least one specific joint, though. Like, I need her because blank. I'm, 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 I'm hella unorganized. I would, like, and I can find things in, in, in an unorganized situation. But she'll come around and organize everything and make everything just so much better and just so much easier for me. Where I don't have to dig through shit and look through a whole bunch of stuff. It's right here because she put it there. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's just a lot easier. It's something small like that, but it's, it, it makes my life easier. Now, nah, if your life is cluttered and shit, all you need is somebody to straighten shit up. Straighten it up unclutters the, the mm-hmm. mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that helps out tremendously. Mm-hmm. Back. Go ahead, I need the one because sometimes I'm a I could be a procrastinator on some stuff. So yeah, she keeps me, you know, reminding me, making sure I'm I'm making sure I, that I'm not missing nothing important, make sure everything is checked off the calendar and just being, you know, supportive, communicative, able to tell you, you know, the, the keeping 100. Don't just, you know, tell me what I want to hear, tell me what I need to hear. That's you know, that's why you would need a woman. That's why I need a woman. All right. Since everybody done bigged up their lady, shouts out to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, girl. Uh, <laughs> I need her because I can't deal with all of the tedious uh, work. I can't deal with, like, 
the cleaning the house and the laundry and the kids mm-hmm. and the homework. Mm-hmm. Like I love my kids dearly. I don't saying I don't know how to wash clothes, but I don't want to wash clothes. Right. I ain't saying I don't know how to wash dishes, but I don't want to wash dishes. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to go through any of those tasks. Like before me and my wife was even together, if her and my daughter wasn't at the spot for a couple of days, them dishes was piled up in that sink. I wasn't doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> she would say, like, we wasn't even here, though, Hank. Like, how you got this shit all in? I'm like, man, listen, until I run out of forks. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't need to do no dishes. I got clean ones. Right. And especially, like, if I ran out of cups, I'm the only one here, nigga. I'm drinking out of the bottle. Ain't nobody here but me. <laughs> no, that's the who fact. I get, who yeah, am I getting the cup for? Like, that's ain't nobody yeah. else gonna see none of this juice but me. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a super fact. fact. That's super. Yeah, yeah but that, I, that that's dope though, man. When you have somebody like like you said, do all the small stuff you you can do, but you like, I'm focusing on this, focusing on that, and she can come in and 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 help you out with that, and and and, and make it look easy. Yeah, for sure. Because they for sure do some shit that make it look easy as hell. You be like, how the hell did you do that? Listen, I mean, I'll this be, is the I'll part be, that I... the part that, that people just confuse now is we most definitely relationships are a 50-50 situation. We just doing for two sure. different jobs. For sure. The 50% that you're doing is not the 50% that I'm doing. And the, mm-hmm. the analogy that I always give people is like, it's like we on a football team. I'm the quarterback. I have to throw the passes. I got to direct us and tell you where we're going and get us down the field. My mm-hmm. wife is the left tackle. She can catch anything on my blind spot that I can't see. She's mm-hmm. over here handling all that shit, like the laundry and the homework and all that, because I hate doing the homework with my daughter. She sits mm-hmm. here with all of the bullshit of 1997, Hank. <laughs> and <laughs> I know it, recognize it, and see it all in her. And I keep telling her, girl, I invented this shit. You can't pull mm-hmm. this shit. Like, <laughs> and so that we don't have to have that problem, it's like, love, can you go handle that? Because <laughs> you're know saying, right. I don't want to have to block Bruce Smith over here. You handle Bruce. <laughs> and hey, that's funny. And I will make sure we score this touchdown, girl. The analogy I heard is uh, you take care of me and I take care of us. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I, once I heard it when I was younger, I didn't get it. But as I got older and started just dealing with women and getting into serious relationships, it made a whole lot of sense to me. And she take yeah, care of me real. and I take care of everything else. What does your woman provide the kids that you can't provide? Who's John, we're going to start with you with that one. Ooh. Full disclaimer. Out of those three, I'm the only single one. But from what I time, when my the person I would could practice is with my daughter's mom, because we still cool. Yeah. She provided, you know, total like support. Well, no matter what the situation was, she had to say, you know, I got your back. No matter what, it's me and you against the world. We can we can tear this down. We don't have to worry about anybody else. If, if they don't agree with it. F it. We as me and you. We don't I don't really care about anybody else. We can we can do this and we gonna make it. And I got your back no matter what the situation is. Nick, we're gonna throw that one to you next. Uh well for me, my baby is uh my first baby gonna be here next month. So from what based off of what I know, my girl uh personality wise and what I have is she's most definitely gonna bring patience because my patience level is like this. And, you know, at times, you know, I guess, you know, the frustrations, everything with that, it comes with it. But she's, on the other hand, she could be patient enough. She can be like, you know, just relax, do this and that, and everything will be cool. Me, on the other hand, nah, it's something, it's something I got to wait for for too long or something like that. It ain't going to work for me. <laughs> All right, hold right. up. We about to derail the conversation before we go to you, Mark. <laughs> this is your first one coming, Nick? First one. Okay, so guess what? <laughs> it's about to be a landmine that blows up your entire world in like a month. Okay. Oh yeah. The girl that you met, the one that you got pregnant, hold on to this last month with her. She gonna be mm. gone after this baby comes. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a totally different mm-hmm. situation. Yep. My brother told me this. I swear he'll always give Boar credit for this because he told me this because my nephew was six months older than my oldest daughter. Uh, Everything changes once they had this baby. Okay? The yes. girl that you like is gone. This is how you find out if you really like her. 
That's how you find mm-hmm. out if this is really going to work. Just like you say now, you ain't got no patience. Guess what? When this baby gets here and it's in your arms and you look at him and they go like, this motherfucker can't do nothing but breathe without me helping him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you having a girl or a boy? I'm having a boy. Okay. He can't do nothing without you. You get a whole lot more patient with his ass. Because guess who's frustrated when his ass keeps crying because you've been up for three days? You. Not him. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get his night. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get his 18 hours. <laughs> You're not gonna get <laughs> you ain't getting yours though. So mm-hmm. I'm just I always I always want to give somebody that because somebody gave it to my brother gave it to me and it was like some of the best shit he ever told me. Probably the best shit he ever told me. Mm-hmm. And like you That's gonna pull you gonna find you gonna find out that people always tell you once you have kids, the shit changes. Absolutely, your whole perspective change on shit. Cause you're gonna realize I can't be the person that I was with this. Cause this has to be something totally different. This is gonna change mm-hmm. everything. Like I said, babies is landmines. They are gonna blow up your whole fucking world. You are gonna look around and be like, when did we get this rug here? Cause this shit wasn't up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, everything gonna be different, mm-hmm. and she gonna be different. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason why they different is just cause you can't knock them down for you know those first couple of weeks there. You tired? Yeah. You ain't had none. This is really what the problem is. But nobody wants to say that. But all right, mm-hmm. now we are gonna throw this one tomorrow. Um. I, I'm in the same situation with John. I'm not with my uh, my son, mom, but she definitely have that the the softer uh, love for him. Like, you know, I I love my son, and and, and sometimes it's tough love. Um, but just How watching her ha- six, he turned seven in July. Okay. Um. Uh. Just watching how she how she is with him, the patience, like like she said, like Nick said. Um. I commend her for that all the time. Like, you know, I, that's, that's dope to me because not only is she teaching him, she's teaching me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I I appreciate that. But like I said, it's the, it's the, the softness and the and the, the patience that, that she showed with him. I think that's dope. The beauty in the shit that you just said is that she's teaching me. It's not yeah. having too much pride to learn some shit or just even accept the fact that you don't fucking know. Half the mm-hmm. time, the problem that we always have is too much pride to just understand and learn some shit from somebody. If uh, Shouts out to Bobby. Me and Bobby talked about this a couple of weeks ago where I started my cleaning business a year ago. Bobby been cutting grass for fucking 10 years. So mm-hmm. we talking about cutting grass. Obviously, shut the fuck up and listen to what Bobby's saying because he knows this shit way better than you do. <laughs> he right. been doing this shit for 10 years. You've been doing right. this shit for a year. Who are you mm-hmm. going to listen to? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So in that aspect of you saying like, she can teach me this is great to always be humble in them situations where it's like, I know that I'm short here and I need to pick it up here, yeah. but I know she got that and I don't. So you go ahead and do it. Yeah. Especially because like I said, she have a, a daughter that's older than my son. Like, you know, she already had a daughter. So I'm already looking at her like, yo, you, you, you've been here before. So, mm-hmm. you know, that this is my first one. And, Yo, I'm I'm just I'm watching how you move and watching how you act. I know how I love. I know how I was taught to love. Um, and with kids, women just have that that natural loving when it comes to kids. So I, I like I said, I watch it and, and I'm still in a most. Now it's not classify everybody because I know. Well, some well, well, well I'm, only, <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only talking to the ones. That, you know what I'm saying? I know some unstable <laughs> creatures. You know what I'm um, we all know yeah. some unstable creatures. <laughs> well, yeah, unstable no, no. creatures. Right. Ain't gonna true. call them the B word. Hey, the unstable one go right to the bottle afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that I, uh, that's out to the every, urban classic baby boy. <laughs> yeah, every 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 day, every day I'm still learning from her and 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 applying it when I'm with him and it's just me and him. So it's a, it, you know it, it, for me, I'm, I'm always feel like is whatever's best for my son, I'm gonna do it. So if I if I can take some from. The homies, if I take some from my son, mom, if I can take some from our girl who's also a mom, I'm I'm willing to take in whatever kind of information is coming in. And I'm a, you know, I'm a I'm a pick and choose which one's best, but I'm a, you know, I'm I'm willing to learn. Always. All right. So for me, I got two daughters. So mm. yeah, you got one. <sighs> my wife is girl dad. I like man, that. My wife is it, she's it because. There's nothing that I can relate to that a nine, my oldest daughter is nine. There's nothing that I can mm. relate to that a nine year old girl is going through. Right. Nah, right. Whether that be physically, they could be physically having a change. They could be emotionally, especially like uh, we talked about this before we started. My wife was pregnant with the shutdown happening and all of that. So we just came back out the house a month ago. So mm-hmm. we just gave up. Like, fuck it. It's not going nowhere. <laughs> um, 
But having that other child, having my oldest child was like, you kind of, the growth of all of those kids got stunted by being stuck in the house and doing school yep. on Zoom and all of that. So it's like, there's nothing going on in her life that I can relate to on really? that aspect. It's like, all you can be there to do is like, ask your mom, support the situation, be encouraging. Mm -hmm. Like, but mm -hmm. as far as just her day to day and why is this happening or why is that happening? It's like, I can't even give you nothing on none of that because mm -hmm. I can't understand it. I can't walk you those shoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? So even when people do have them situations where we ain't together, but we co-parenting, I know it'd be hard in most situations because, you know, shit just goes left from time. But we can hate each other, but we got to be on an even accord in front of them babies. Yep, we got to make sure we got the same message. We can't that's say... The main thing. We can't have it like... Uh, you can't drink soda at my house, but you gonna go straight to your mom's house, and you man, like mm -hmm. you got a you got a whole two liter in there with your name on it. Like <laughs> if we're not going you. with, we ain't going with it. We can't go with it at both spots. Like we got to talk about this, and you know, make sure that we on an even accord. Like I said, we could argue, cuss each other out when it's just us, but when she or he is sitting there, we gotta be on the same page. Right, the same page. Yeah, yeah. And, and and even to to the co-parents, I I can't speak for John, but like. Like for me, it started off real bad. But I think once as uh, she realized that I was only here for my son and I'm for the best of my son, we started to, you know, get better at co-parenting. Now that's like like my best friend. It's hard to admit that we just wasted each other's time to break that situation up. Some that's people don't know some people don't know how to be alone. Some people just have to be in a relationship, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Some That's people stay in a toxic relationship versus being by themselves just because they don't know what being by themselves look like. Mm. So That's some a, people yeah. like I always try to like oh, let's man. not he, are you, that was you as far as I uh, stay in this toxic joint versus being by myself. Yeah, long time. Mm. Marcus, Mark no. I mean, yeah. some some people like man. It's one thing that I like. I just I kind of got to this right recently. Is it's nothing louder than the voice in your head. No matter what the world is telling you, some you can have the most encouraging niggas around you in the world, but if you got self doubt, if yep. you don't believe it, ain't shit that yep. they could tell you. It's gonna be no amount of proof that they can show you if you don't believe it. If the noise in your head is saying that shit ain't gonna work, that shit ain't gonna work, that shit ain't gonna work, it don't matter what the world is giving you. Like, and if you're the type of person who is like, but then you gotta start all over. We break up now. Where the fuck am I even living at? Now I gotta go stay at my cousin's on the couch. That nigga be getting on my nerves because he always got shit going on over there. Or mm -hmm. do I got to go to my mom's? Or like, right. now it's just like, I could just stay with this bitch, roll my eyes every day, and like sit yeah. in the car for an extra 20 minutes. Like, right. them situations is hard. So when you end up now, we done broke up and we got a baby. So mm. now you go like, shit, now I can't be there every day. It's not possible for me to be there to pick you up and drop you off to school and be there for dinner and figure out how your day went. Like, mm -hmm. it's just hard. And then when you force the other person to be in that situation where they're dealing with all of that, and mm -hmm. now they're like, I done wasted my time with this nigga, or I done wasted my time with this girl. It's like, man, that's how we end up with these toxic now. It's fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. Feel shit right there. Not to discourage you, you know, with a brand new situation. Nick, best of luck to y'all. <laughs> man, look. Hey, look no, I, no, I ain't worried together. about that. We, we saw no, they No, they stand together. They straight. We're going to make sure of that. Yeah, we yeah, solid. They straight. They straight. I mean, let's listen. That's what I like to hear, man. But look, so, like, there's always that possibility, though. There's, there's no <laughs> doubt. I mean, there's nothing. Nothing's 100 percent set in stone. I can do the shit next week and piss her the fuck off. She's like, I'm, I'll, I'll holler at you later. Yep. I'm glad you said that. Which one of y'all said unconditional love in the beginning? Somebody said Nick. unconditional love. Nick. Nick. So Ooh. this is a uh, shout out. To, I, again, brought this up a couple weeks ago. Shout out to BTG Podcast, Uncle Face. This was his joint. Uh -huh. All love is conditional because like you just said, in any given second, shit can change. Mm -hmm. She can say or do something. You can say or do something, especially when you involve a kid. If yeah. I feel like the decisions that you're making are to harm my child, I don't give a fuck about nothing now. Like, yep. I'm cool. Yep. Yep. I don't want you around her. I don't want you around him. I can't raise him or her with you. Yep. So mm -hmm. All love is always conditional. You know, the conditions are different in them different situations, but all love because at any moment anybody can say or do anything. Like what this bitch just disrespecting my mom? 
<laughs> hey, 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 my we had a, a conversation, me and my homie, shout out to my homie Will. When he was with his we need five uh, stars, his, Will, not four. <laughs> when he was with uh, his son, mom, and we was all having a conversation, and she was like, uh, Do you love me unconditionally? And he was like, No, nah, I only love my kid unconditionally. <clears throat> and she got so mad, she didn't understand what, what he meant by that. And after they broke up, of course, she was like, Okay, I get it now. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? He was like, The only, I only person I love unconditionally. Them kids got conditions. <laughs> them kid, if them kids, what if you, my daughter come in the house and still my wife? She's 16 and she think now I'm grown and I can say and do whatever I want. Did you just put your fucking hands on my wife? My mm. wife is not to be touched. Like, this is a no fly yeah. zone. That's a them fact. kids disrespect your mom or your dad or your grandma. Or something. Yeah, All yeah. love is conditional. There are no exceptions. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I, see, I have a, I have a son, so I feel like if he's sixteen and he and he hit, which you know, as her being my son, mom, I don't play with when it comes to her because you know what I'm saying that's the mother right, of my now, son. Say your son six, your son seventeen. He came in the house and he smacked your dad. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm at the beat his ass. <laughs> I'm saying, like at that but moment, I'm gonna still. I'm I'm gonna still love her. But yeah, I ain't not. saying you don't love him, but at that, but now things is different. Now we is not like yeah. you know what I'm saying hey. it ain't it ain't called daddy, and I'll take care of it. Go yeah, ahead, nah. about to say something. Hey, unconditional what love ain't gonna stop you from getting your ass whooped. Let's let's, let's yeah. put that down right no, there. No. <laughs> again, shout out to those are, shout those out to classes the urban pain, classic those baby. classes of discipline. Shout yep. out, I was about to say, shout out again to the Urban Classic when my man Pete took his belt off and said, you little niggas need a thorough ass whoop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how you handle that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I, honestly, that, that's how I was talking. Like, my, my dad, anytime I used to, when I was younger, anytime my pops used to, uh, I used to get, like, start talking sideways, my pops would tell my older brother, take me in the backyard. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What no more whoopings at that point is my, my big brother beating my ass now. Oh, yeah, see, I've been bigger than my brother since I was 10. <laughs> I was 10, he's 14. Like, yeah, nigga, I'll tackle you. <laughs> I'm the only one child that's the only child, so I didn't have that issue. Oh, damn. You're the only child syndrome. Damn it. Yeah, man. See, that's why you see that. See, Major. you just said Major. that, and that, ex- that explained a lot about the the relationship the situation. Yep. Copy that. But that's a whole yep. other episode. That's when the next time I can get y'all on the Hot House podcast, right? We're not going to tackle that right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. that's podcast drive through. We like to get y'all in and out. Let's talk a little bit about the podcast now. How long have we been doing the podcast, fellas? Okay, I'll let Mark start. We we've been doing. We make we make two years in July officially. We we did a, we started piloting in November of 2019. But as far as official episodes on life, it started July in 2020. I'll let Mark tell you how the story how it all came about though. So we was a uh, I was already uh, on Townhouse Media and uh, we was doing No Rules podcast. And then uh, B, uh, Ben had uh, was like, yo, I'm looking for a sports podcast. And John is like a sports encyclopedia. So uh, yeah. I was like, you know, I, I got somebody who probably would do it. We can do a test show and see how it goes. So at first it was just me and John. And I told John, like, this is your show. Like, you run it however you want to go. I'm going to follow your lead. Like, however you want to do it, we go do it. <clears throat> um, you know, we did a couple of shows. And then, you know, Nick being uh, Ben's brother, was just walking around the house throwing out uh, answers to some of the questions. <laughs> oh yeah. And so I said, so I said, yo, why don't you just uh, come on the show? And I told John like we should have Nick on there, like permanently, like just make him part of the show. That's a good fit. And you know, Nick said yeah, so we was happy with that. And that's how it, here we are, hundred episodes later. <clears throat> Copy that. Uh, I told y'all that. You know what I'm saying the other day when y'all did it though. But congratulations on the hundredth episode. Hundred episodes ain't nothing to sneeze at. That's consistency. That's dedication to the craft. How many mm-hmm. podcasts start off and don't get past episode eight? That's because you yeah, really had those facts. couple of topics that you wanted to talk about, but you know what I'm saying? We talked about this shit before we started recording. Some niggas got a hobby. Some niggas want to turn this into a career. Uh, mm-hmm. We gone nonstop, out. and we been nonstop every week. Copy, every I, week. I missed, I missed and two weeks. Fall. I missed two weeks in the year and a half that I've been doing it, and that was the week I did the live show, I just didn't have time to record. Right. And the week I moved, the Wi-Fi wasn't set up in the crib yet to do an episode. Right. Right. I was pissed though. I would try like five different times to record that week, and it just wasn't working. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we even through, man, even through the pandemic, even through the pandemic, we we did like we're doing now. We did the Zoom. Uh, I caught COVID, so I couldn't be around them for a while. I was still doing it through Zoom. You know what I'm saying? So, like you said, it's a dedication, no matter what. Yeah, because it wasn't easy during the pandemic. Because there was no yeah. sports going on. Oh man, it was rough. We figured it out though. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that helped was right when we got started. Because right when we got started, it was you kept hearing these whistles that the NBA was coming back. The and problem. obviously, we was weeks away from training camp in the NFL. Baseball was going to start back. And then everything just happened all at once. You got the NBA restart. Yeah, you had an oh. overload there in like yeah, October, crazy. September. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. usually, you know, had like, the Masters mm-hmm. going then. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, because, you know, usually in October, everything is like when all the worlds collide. Basketball, football, baseball, hockey, they all collide in October. But you had it all colliding in July and August. Mm-hmm. In July, we talk, we trying to get ready for football. We talking some baseball. A little. You, we talking you, baseball. Got a, you got the free agent signings coming back. Exactly. basketball. We yeah. But all this happened, and it was just like, yo, this could have been the perfect time for this to happen. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, and the New York Knicks for sure helped a lot too. And the Washington them, them and the well, Washington at that time was the football team. team. They gave us so much easy content. It was crazy. <laughs> them niggas. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> hey, it was so much easy content with them alone. Bro, it was crazy. But tell me this. Them yeah. and Steve Stout and all their just unnecessary drama with Dolan, it was so much. Yeah, the, the, the Knicks, boy, they're the most overrated, uh, like, uh, Blue blood, but they don't really say blue blood in basketball. That's more of a, uh, I mean, more of a college, not a pro thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but right. The Knicks is supposed to be like the Lakers and the Celtics, and they just not. It's really the Sixers for real, for real, and not the Knicks. But nobody ever wants yeah. to admit that. Yeah. Um, That's just because they in New York and they work and they work the most. I mean, the yeah, real estate is real estate with them. Yeah. That's all it is. But they give they don't give Chicago no love for being the number three market. They just give the Knicks the love for being number one. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Nick, tell me this. What's the wildest shit somebody said on the show? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my the show God. been done, for sure. Oh, my God. For sure, <laughs> John. Say. Oh, shit. Man, hey, look. John, hey, for like about a six-week span, John was just saying something crazy like every week. I remember it hey, was for- one episode in particular where uh, John had uh, Stephen A. Smith on calling out names. For uh, for talking for saying something about uh, who was he talking about? And he made fun of. I think it was uh, Shay Otani. He was saying something oh, about yeah. that he should speak English. And then later on, John was uh, making fun of Conor McGregor's accent. Oh Bro, my god! Hilarious. Oh my god! Hilarious. I heard that. I, I'm sorry. So let me say. So I made, I brought it up because Conor McGregor was talking. It, it was after he got he got knocked out in the fight. Oh, was it? I think mean, I forgot who was he fight, fighting. It's the one when he, he broke said, his leg. He told us to where yeah. he told who he was fighting. He said, His wife, my wife, your wife is in my DMs, and I did it in an Irish accent. And I was like, Your wife sent me DMs, and they just lost it. Yo, I was like, yo, John, where, yo, yo, John. Exa- where exactly can the listeners of the How to Hustle podcast behind find this so they can go back in the archives and you know what I'm saying check that one out? Oh, yeah. definitely on YouTube, Facebook. Definitely on, on that one. Definitely YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts, Google and Google Podcasts. What are they searching, John? Come on now. Search, uh, sports, search Sports for You podcast. It's first townhouse media, and you can find all the Sports for You podcasts there from previous episodes. And you can find every episode on Facebook and on YouTube. See what did I tell? What did I tell you in the beginning, Mark? I give you the great bounce pass. You know what I'm saying just lay the ball up. Don't call me Brown. That's All right. right. Before I let y'all go, because I know the last episode that y'all did, uh, as of this recording, should we say, the last episode uh-huh. that y'all did of this recording was on the schedule on the NFL on the hundredth episode for y'all. Who are our preseason picks for the Super Bowl? Um, I'm biased. I'm a Bills fan, so I got a. Uh, I got Bills and uh, Rams. <clears throat> Bills, Rams. You got the Rams going back again. Okay. Go, yeah. Nick. Go, Nick. Because I know, because I know, it's gonna be more discussion what I say. So go, Nick. Well, I already know John gonna be biased. What do you say? Uh, it's two, it's two teams in here. 
I, I want to be biased too and say my Raiders, but I don't know what our defense is going to do. So I'm I'm in I'm in the question mark with that. But uh, I I'll have the Bills coming out, the, coming out the AFC for sure. You got, you got the Bills out the too. You got the uh, for the NFC. I who I I want to say Bills and Rams because the Rams and they didn't reload it. They didn't right, so reload. We got, a, we, got, we got a copy. We got a copy from you. All right, come on, John. All right. I would. It, I, I can make it unanimous to say Bills and Rams, but I'm a Broncos fan. We just got Russell Wilson, and I don't think we just got Russell Wilson just to say we made it to the playoffs. So I got Broncos, Rams, and they're going to say I have two teams because let me be that's clear, right? I'll for sure. My that. daughter's mom is a Rams fan. <laughs> that's John's two teams. Well, yep. and, and she got two teams too, John. So, y'all, and y'all now, oh man, we got a lot of strong she, in these Rams. She, well, we put it like this: it's just what they've done lately. My daughter's mom now for years, and Mark would contest to it. She always said she was a Bills fan, but she, but then she would also say she was a Rams fan. But when the news came out that the Rams was coming back to LA, she basically kicked the Bills to the curve, even though <laughs> the month before. The month before our daughter was born. What about the Chargers? Man, stop. They were our daughter was born. I took her to Bills Chargers Rams at the Coliseum. They were so 5-2, man. That's fucked up. They tennis, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Chargers the fuck up out of here. They tennis. Get them out of here, dude. Out of here. I was there last year. Me and, my, me and our boy, other boy, Bass, we went there last year. He a Chargers fan because producer Ben Reddy is a Chargers season ticket holder. So... When he tell didn't go, ben, he was like, yo. Tell ben, and, tell ben and Baz we only accept five stars, not four here on the Hot Supply Games. Anybody who that's gets a right. shout out, you let them know. Hype doesn't accept four stars. He only accepts five. That's right. <laughs> when you send them the episode. Hey, we going to relate to here. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're saying. When you send them the episode and say, yo, yeah, we shouted you out on the joint. We was doing an interview. You know what I'm saying? He only accept four. It's only five. <laughs> well, got, I got Broncos Rams. I got Broncos Rams because obviously we didn't get Russell Wilson just to say we we're back in the playoffs. Look, last time we was in the playoffs, we won the Super Bowl. We need to get back there. It's, it's do, overdue. Well, that ain't happening this year, John. Get over it. Well, let me see. So this is what I'm going to say tentatively. Uh, I'm going to go Green Bay because Aaron Rodgers has got to get back at some point. Like, mm-hmm. you keep winning all these MVPs. You got to get some more of these Super Bowl games on your resume. You can't mm-hmm. have one on your resume. So you got to get back at some point. Losing Devontae Adams now, this is the perfect time for great running game defense, and then they'll tell you about how Aaron Rodgers led him all the way. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And the AFC, I'm still going with Kansas City. I can't not go with Kansas City. Still. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that. I understand. Uh, they division is hard as they, – they division is going to be hard as hell. I know. No, they got the – They got the – They got the – part of the reason why they have misery. But, yeah, I they definitely don't believe in the Bengals. Now. I definitely don't believe in the Bengals. The offensive really? line is terrible. The offensive line is terrible. You got to see oh, how it yeah, works. They, they got they made a couple of they made a couple of additions, but you got to see how it gels together. Hey, and hey, they're hi. the they're the Bengals too. So you know. Hey, <laughs> you want to hear something? When me and Nick for for the longest we were saying that they need to fix the O line in the draft, go get Panay Sewell from Oregon. Mark was the only one saying go draft Jamar, Jamar Chase. Chase. Because of his, because of the chemistry him and Joe Burrow had at LSU, and me and Nick was like, man, man, that do sound good, but man, that old line he just coming off the ACL. Well, the Bengals was too smart. I don't say them niggas was in Super Bowl with that line, and Jamar Chase didn't look like no fucking rookie out there. That boy was fucking killing. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, yeah. they went to the Super. They went to the Super Bowl because of Leslie Frazier, and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, blame the black man. You know what I'm saying? We trying to get Leslie a second job, and you gonna do no, Leslie? You can have him. You can have him. <laughs> hey, look. And then see, so you, a Leslie Frazier player. I'm about to say, so even then, see, you brought this up. I grew up a Bills fan. Jim Kelly, Andre uh-huh. Reed, Thurman Thomas, right. Bruce Smith. Right. You notice I threw Bruce Smith at, out there at y'all earlier in the podcast. That's what. That's, that's, that's what, what, oh, yo, Mark caught that. Mark caught that. that. Yeah. No, Not, that's why Nick was laughing. There's, that was an East. That's an Easter egg for all my day one guys who know. Oh yeah, Hype was a dot in the Wolves Bills fan. Jim Kelly, my favorite player ever. But we couldn't beat them Cowboys in the Super Bowl every year. So that's how I've been a Cowboys fan ever since. Nobody's <laughs> beat the Cowboys Super Bowl. No, we can beat. We could. 
We couldn't beat the NFC East in the Super Bowl. Nah, yeah, we, we lost to the Giants, the Redskins. That's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. told you, I started in the game in sports. I can, We can definitely go there, you know what I'm saying? But these conversational situations is what the ladies love. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Who ain't trying to wear orange in the Super Bowl? And who's Broncos, at John Elway, uh, you know what I'm saying? Terrell Davis, all of that. That was my squad. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah you, had to, you had to love Terrell, Terrell Davis. You had to lose by like 50 points. Yeah, you, you had to love Terrell Davis, though. Hey, oh, I yeah. tell people all the time, if it wasn't for Terrell Davis, John Elway will have zero Super Bowls. That is true. Zero. I mean, but it's kind of, it's a, it's a catch-22 with everybody with those situations. John Elway wouldn't be considered one of the best ever for not never winning one, but everybody in football especially, basketball a little different, but in football, everybody needs something. Like, you have to have something to go with it. You got Dan Marino and never got back again. Cause he could throw for all the yards he wanted. If we gonna keep giving up thirty, shit don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. yep. No running game. Like, nothing. Um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So everybody needs something in football. Yep. Um. Yep. Before we wrap this one up, y'all, I appreciate y'all coming on. Throw y'all handles out there so that the folks know where to follow y'all at, where to subscribe at, and that they can check y'all out. All right. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jay Watson zero nine eight four. Follow Sports for You on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram at Sports for You Podcast. At Jay uh, Watson 0984 on Twitter, Instagram, at Sports for You Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Townhouse Media okay. on YouTube. Uh, me, my name is uh, Hi, I'm Mark on Instagram and uh, Hi, I'm Mark One on uh, Twitter. Um, it's a bunch of foolishness, especially on Twitter. So uh, get ready for some fun. Uh, the same thing, Townhouse Media, uh, Sports for You Podcast. Um, that's it. Man, follow me, Nick underscore freeze. And you can also follow my music account, uh nine nine gorilla. All one word. Uh you can also most definitely find me on Twitter at nine nine gorilla. <laughs> and you can also sports for you, excuse me, sports for you on, on Twitter, uh-huh. Facebook, YouTube, all that. Follow all, all right, cop, copy that. And y'all appreciate y'all coming on episode 66 of the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle Podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>